Elvin R. Bush, um, built in 1961, uh, drinking fountain up here, nice looking drinking fountain, uh, they have 200 picnic tables in several areas, and I'm going to show you a little bit of history that I know of. Uh, waterfowl. This is uh, this is what I'm going to step back a little bit. Uh, get a little bit of waterfowls here. Show you what's up here. All right. Um, I think there used to be a beach here, but I I don't know. I I guess they don't have it, but. I'll show you a few things. They have a small restroom. They have two campgrounds, one primitive and one with electric. And they have picnic tables, even though some of them can look a little kind of rustic, but that's the way a lot of things are. They have a playground. Over there's the playground. They also have a, ten, uh, a volleyball net. Some other seats. Some more about birds. This is like my maybe third time here at this park. But uh, the last time I was here, I was with a friend. We went fishing, got to caught some catfish. As for fish, there's uh, eleven. Uh, I think there's eleven native and 11, and somewhere around seven. Uh, Evasive. Uh, what I mean, evasive, not completely stocked. And nice place to fish right here. You have a benches and stuff. I mean, I fished. I fished near the dam last time I was up here. Had to climb down a hill. There's a uh, steps to go up and down to this little uh, contributory. Showing you a whole bunch of picnic tables in this area. Be nice to have a family outing here. They even have uh, horseshoes over there. Place to put your um, uh, yeah, put your coal. And there's another drinking fountain. A little bit more drinking fountain, two in one spot. <laughs> but I'm coming over here where this great playground is, because. This is in loving memory of Ava H. Calhoun, 1932-1996, beloved wife, mother, grandmother, friend, and park employee, doted by family and friends. As for Kettle Creek, John Calhoun was one of the founders up this way. And there's several different ideas. Wikipedia has it as the Indian nearby had kettles. That's the reason why it's called Kettle Creek. My idea would be if maybe a civilian came here and they had they bringing kettles up on their wagons and stuff, the wagon train. But for Kettle Creek Park, it's eight miles above Westport, and. Um, I'm just showing you this area, and um, and the dam's like about that eight miles too, so it's eight and nine miles. It says on Wikipedia seven, maybe talking about the campground that's down below there, maybe cause it being seven there. Getting that little sign here to tell you that we're up. And up that way is the camp office. Okay, places to put your trash. Here and all right, here's I think one of the boat launches, which only allow small motor bo boats, uh, canoes, paddle boats, uh, ones that's easy on. Easy on the on the lake. Kind of rustic water. 
once they're going fishing over there. Uh, see, they even they have these uh, boats right here, paddle boats, jo Johnny boats, and all these little ones you probably have to rent. There's a power boat at the docks. I'm gonna show you a little bit more here and go up to the park sign. <laughs> Stock trout waters is what this Kettle Creek is. Stream here around fishing, specially regulated apply. And right here is the directory information of if you need a hospital and everything. And right here is the park map. I'll bring it out a little bit. Hmm. Hunting or fishing permitted. Courtesy dock. Snowmobile trailhead. Softball field? I'll have to find that. Uh, maybe it's. Uh, must. Uh, I guess there's no softball field there now, but. Cattle Creek Vista. The village of Lady is right in the middle. Near Kettle Creek, and so is Hammersley Fork, and Tamarack is near there. Uh, beginning of November 1st, boaters must wear life jacket on boats less than 16 feet in length, or any canoe or kayak during the cold weather months from November 1st to through April. Electric boat motors only. Uh, the spotted uh, lanternfly it is not on this, I don't think, but. You're only allowed to buy native wood here. You're not allowed to bring it from another place and bring it in. Well, I'll leave no trace. Front country ethic principle for campground and day use. It tells you, it, you pause it and it tells you what, why. Here's the regulations. <laughs> Very fine print. So, try to get that a little bit in there. Down that way a little ways. Bring it down that way a little ways. Bring it down that way a little ways. Bring it down that way a little ways. A little swing set over there on this area. I know they used to have a beach in this area one time. Back in that part of the field, there's a softball field back if you want to play softball. Right. Going up to the park office, see what it's like up this road. Uh, milkweed patch. Got a little bit of, it won't hurt me driving in this area, there's not many some some bluebird boxes over there which is built at the Howard Nursery uh, park office uh, yeah. all right this is the park office up here above the above the recreation area Restrooms. Uh, pretty. Um, yeah, get some flyers in this little area here. You can get gift cards and other things here at the office. They had the American flag underneath these pine maple. And these and this other tree I can't remember the name of here near the office at the place walk on Pennsylvania Elk Scenic Drive I'm just gonna show you they don't have the name of it. it's pretty well faded out looks like the Sun faded out all the names and stuff here so she tells you how to get here and shows you the streams and bucks 
And I just missed filming a deer. Oh well. Uh, live, live the legacy. Imagine more than two million acres of deep forest, rugged hills, and fast flowing streams conserved for your benefit and enjoyment. This Pennsylvania wild is covering 12 countries in North Central Pennsylvania. Oh. And that's, where, that's where it covers, if you can see it. The sun is. Uh, if you can see that. Alright. And right there is the dam. I'm going to go film that in a few minutes for now. And back in 1993 and 2004, this, the flood waters approached to stop sign below you. That's that one right there. And, that, and then I'm up on a hill. So, another bird. House. Hey, I missed it, but there's a blue, blue bird boxes back there, and I missed the deer again. Uh, okay. Well, they're down there. There's uh, some... Uh, Canadian geese down there, if you can see them. I'm filming along the lake, uh, Kettle Creek Lake, showing you what it looks like. Just taking my time going through here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it now. The Kettle Creek Vista is out this way. That sugar, sugar camp area. Another road, upper campground road. Up there's the campground up that way. Sorry about the noise. There's a, mo one with a motorcycle running over here. I'm showing you what it looks like from the from the Album Bush Dam area. Bring it back so you can see a little better. I'm gonna film a little bit of history here. Just showing you the view right now. Simeon Fouts, Susanna Fouts, 1781 to 1856 Fouts, uh, and then the other one is 1794 to 1848. In memory of Simeon Fouts and wife Susanna, first white settlers on Kettle Creek. He selected this site in 1813, cleared the land, built a log house, went to Perry County for his wife, two-year-old son, Simon, and returned in 1814 to spend the rest of their days. They reared nine children. The cemetery where several family members were buried was a short distance upstream along the North Shore. Simeon died from a bite of a rattlesnake he was handling. Alvin R. Bush Dam. Why build a dam? If you were in Renova in March 1936, you would remember the devastating St. Patrick's Day flood. Water covers three-fourths of the town, causing over 750,000 of damage. Flash floods and ice continued to devastate the area until Congress stepped in and authorized construction of Alvin R. Bush Dam, a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers project. Its primary purpose reduced to floods in communities such as Renova, Shintown, Farwell, and North Bend. How does the dam work? I'll leave you read it. All right. What does this mean? Floods are natural occurrence and remains a constant threat. In 1975, tropical storm Aloise produced one of the highest poles ever in Kettle Creek Lake as the dam held back water and reduced flooding downstream. It demonstrated how well the project performed its primary mission of flood risk management since the dam com completion 1962, it continues to protect the lives and home people in the region and save millions of dollars in flood damage to downstream communities. I'll step back and leave you, show you the sign. All right. I don't see the, I don't see it now. All right, here's a look at the view of the, of the dam on the inside here. And you can see it's, it's falling apart here, but they've redone a little bit of it. And over there's the water management towers. That back when you used to have antennas reaching to the skies. And Evan R. Bush Dam, Kettle Creek, U.S. Army Corps of Engin Engineers, Baltimore District, Thomas H. Lipscomb, Brigadier General, uh, 
U.S. Army Division Engineer Warren R. Johnson, Colonel of U.S. Army District Engineer James P. Weaver, Re Resident Engineer, 1959 to 1962. This is echoing. <laughs> I'm going to show you what's behind you. It's a cliff wall. They dug, probably dug some of the, and used the, the dam. Ebenor Bush Dam completed 1962 capacity, 75,000 acres, feet, 24.4 billion gallon, cost 7.1 thousand damage prevented to 272,160,000 Baltimore District U.S. Army Corps of Engineer. As I said, a lot of native stuff going on, a lot of native uh, fishes, a lot of evasives like uh, uh, we put uh, brown trout in there, and rainbow was once gone, and now back. Small narrow bridge that goes over Kettle Creek spillway, right there, and the water goes through on the other side over there. I just wanted to show you what it looks like, and and down there is a sign. All right, guys, have a good day.